we're going to go ahead and call the, uh, the City Council meeting in order Monday, October 12th, 7 p.m. Uh, roll call. Nicole Andrew. Michelle Otto. Lloyd Johnson. Kirby Moyna. Jeff Belter. Wayne McCormick. Uh, Pastor Paul. First, I just uh, ask for a little bit of personal privilege just to remind everybody that our food drop, our monthly food drop is tomorrow at 3 o'clock over at the church. If anybody knows of anybody that is in need, let them know, please, because we've got plenty. So. Um, I found a, kind of a funny thing that uh, hit home with me um, Facebook. It says, this is your gentle reminder that one time in the Bible, Elijah was like, God, I'm so mad, I want to die. You know? And so God says, well, here, have some food, and why don't you take a nap? So Elijah slept, ate, and decided things weren't so bad. So never underestimate the spiritual power of a nap and a snack. And I think that's a good reminder for all of us going through this COVID stuff. So, um, and for the business we have tonight, just take it easy. Make the right decision as you can. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for the chance to be together tonight to talk about the business of this community and to remind us that we are indeed a community of relationships and it's about the people. Please uh, be with us as we seek your wisdom for us and for each other. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. States of America, to the true republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, we're, we're getting more than 
the wood products, maybe you know, plastic, glass, whatever something else to hide in the back of the pile. But we do get their license out and we get their picture of their vehicle. Okay. And I forward it to the sheriff and they really can't do much because it is a dump site. Okay, so the, the legality of it all is, is that when they say perhaps drop off some uh, plastic item that they can't fit in their garbage can and for some reason, um, that now just became our problem. Right. And all that's our problem once they throw them out there. Yeah. And they, they won't give me the person's name because all I want the people to do is come and pick up their stuff. You know, we get that across them, we come and get it. I don't want to prosecute anybody. And as so far as the sheriff's office goes with giving information <coughs> out, um, there's a lot of private data, a lot of public data, and the sheriff's office cannot share license plate information with a non-law enforcement agency. They have to go through other means to get that yeah. information. So the only reason, the only way that we would work with it is if we're going to prosecute them, which doesn't sound like the city really wants to pursue them a lot. Plus, um, Judging by what I read on Facebook and stuff, there's a lot more that the city would like the cops to be doing rather than chasing people who are putting three-inch yeah. pieces of tree. And yeah. doing stuff like that is very labor-intensive for the sheriff's office. It takes time, energy, effort, um, and a lot of times it leads to no end anyways. So okay. That's kind of a hard part for the sheriff's office side of things. Okay, that's understandable. So I guess my, my second point then would be is We've locked it down to prevent that from happening. Um, if you want to use it, come on in, grab a key, go use it, bring the key back. But that isn't necessarily that convenient for the people that live within the city limits here that uh, want to use it. On a regular basis, I, I, I have five or six people just on my strip of the sidewalk. You know, just talking to them, they're all pretty much same voice as me saying, what can we do to make this, uh, we can just go back in and just start getting on a Tuesday night, drop off my yard clippings. Well, they can call in and get a key. We'll put it in the box. Okay. Outside with their name on it. That's what you listen to that for. Okay. You know, they come and get it after hours. And all they have to do is return it in the box on the inside. They have to give their information before we'll put the key out there. Okay. And we know who they are, make sure they're from town. Yeah, oh yeah. And then we're also looking into maybe next year hiring somebody to keep an eye on. Okay. Yeah, and I thought that was I guess where I was going with it was yeah. my my mom lives in the Minnetonka area and in that that uh, Hennepin County uh, everybody has their own way of doing things. They're a lot larger things. So right. so on Saturday morning at eight AM they're open. Um, and they're checking licenses because I drove in there, my mom's eighty and I'm taking care of her yard, and I go up there and he gets my license and says, no, well, you're not a resident, so you can't come in here. I have to go throw my mom in the truck and bring her in just to get rid of her yard waste. But they're real picky about it. Yeah. 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 That way you don't have people dropping off trees and freezers and stuff like that. So and I think that's kind of what maybe was happening too. Is that I got wind of that. Yeah, we, we've caught those and their phone numbers are actually on the vehicles. And I called them and they come and got their stuff. That oh, out. they came back and grabbed it. Yep. They just weren't aware of it here. Well, they just wanted to get rid of it. They weren't supposed okay. to bring it here. Yeah, yeah. No. Okay. All right, well, it's good to hear. Did Thank you. Hey, Wayne. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, is there a place in the compost area that we can put, like, you know, you said there's two inches maximum? Have, like people that are cutting down trees to put it out to the side for people to come and get like firewood. We can do that. What kind of liabilities you have? So when you out there with a chainsaw and starts cutting into smaller chunks. You know? Mm -hmm. Well I mean as you know they just have people just you know like we had the tree over on first street that was you know, um, we offered to help take care of that, and then if somebody you know, put it down, if they need there's firewood, they're going to get it. We give them the first one to the stairs. Right. Right. Does the city own the timber? No. Oh. I was going to say, can you guys, if you guys own the wood timber, you can really just, you know, 
Did you ever get the uh, any kind of data on when it's most used at all? Nice week I mean, it's after hours. So, right now, with it being the busy season for leaves and, um, you know, yard cleanup and all that kind of stuff, as I was mentioned before, um, with the burn restrictions, is there some way that we can figure out how to have this open? I mean, because we, we already know that now everybody's returning keys, so then it puts out. If we just about that most of the way. I turned in a key and I. What? I know. I mean, it took us time to get those keys back, but, um, you know, we only have X amount to 3,000 residents. Um, well, they're not all going to be up at the same time. You just have to return them. Yeah. Can't keep them. Right. Yeah, that, that was what was brought up when I brought that up last month, is that then the on-call guys, they're only here for two hours, and some of them are here at 6 a.m., and some of them are here at 4 in the afternoon. And, I mean, it, it definitely needs to be open on the weekends at, at, at some point of, you know, whether someone on the city council or whatever just goes up there and opens it up at 8 a.m. and then has to close it at 1 o'clock or something, but I mean, you have to sit there because the leaves are pretty bad. I mean, I've got six trees, and I'm out Friday, and they were already back on Saturday morning. So, <laughs> and some people have more than that. Yeah. 
that's going to be a security nightmare for us. Don't you? you get somebody parked in front of the camera and you're going to dump them all kinds of stuff. But if you're the first one in, that makes that your responsibility to make sure nobody comes in at you until you're done. One at a time. And go in, that's nobody goes in until you're done. And I can tell you from experience with the fire department, that's why I have 21 guys that I love and cherish on the fire department. They suck at locking doors. Sorry, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Has anybody looked into an electronic gate? I know they're on the ground. They'll do a keypad. They'll do a keypad, kind of like a storage unit, where you enter the keypad code. If you want to sign up for the keypad code, you put your name in at City Hall. Everybody has your information. Then you have to digitally punch in. Gate opens. Then you can dump it. That kind of gets rid of the commercial because if they don't have the code, they can't get in. Right. And, and, and you could do like a uh, storage facility where you have your own code. Each person has their own code. Right. It's not the same code. And you tell them the code and they put it into the controller. I think that's right a better way to go. Right now you're just having to set the leads mm -hmm. removal, you know, so you got everybody wanting to get rid of leads and suddenly there's nothing there. There's got to be some kind of... Well, it sounds to really like everybody's concerned, so... We would leave it open. Everybody's going to have to help police it then. If you see somebody dumping something legal, get their license number. Or you know, they shut it down at night. Certain, I mean, you know, well, that's just it. We can shut it at 5 o'clock, but we don't have yeah. people that are here after 4.30. I mean, and it kind of goes back to the same situation that we're in right now. But it's only, what are we, October 12th? People are only going to be going into two more weeks. Three at mass. So well, next spring we'll try to hire somebody and yeah. post the days it's going to be open, which isn't going to please everybody either. So can we open it then for the next two weeks to the residents, our cleaning up? And as you said, I think everybody here is going to, they're going to police it. I think everybody that's, you know. I'm curious when, you, when you're mentioning, you know, police and, you know, just a citizen of Montreal here. Um, and I'm in there, and I'm getting rid of my grass clippings like I do. I just go in and shoot them back, pick up and launch them. But, uh, and all of a sudden I see the guy pull up with so-and-so tree service. Mm -hmm. I mean, am I calling you guys? I mean, yeah, right you know, I'll walk up to yeah. the guy and go, hey, you do realize you're not supposed to do that. No, 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 don't confront him, just get the well, information. Yeah. Maybe he's just yeah. oblivious, you know, yeah. he brings his blessing. Well, they know they can't dump in city spots unless they... So they already know it's not going to go to And all the signage is up there as to what is going on. Yeah, yeah. I see it. Yeah. I see the what was in there, too, so I understand why. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So... But it's, uh, but it's a like you're saying, policing it, well, then I, what, right. take pictures and call somebody else? Yes, so you don't listen yeah, to I mean, Let's you can know. reach out to any of us at okay. any time. You know, we're, we're all available. If you see, if you're and, in there, you see. And again, that would be a happenstance because I'm there for about 2.5 minutes. Right. So, right. <laughs> so, so Wayne, can we open it up for the next two weeks? We're we're, we're going to want all keys returned though. Yeah. Immediately. All keys. How many are still gone? How many are missing? Well, we'll call the people that have the keys. We have them. There's only a couple, right, buddy? She brought it with them. Michelle brought them back. That was mine. Yes. Right. Well, you could let them know too that, hey, you return those keys that the rest of Montrose gets to have this thing open and tell them you're old enough to show. Them. Right. Yeah, I mean, it is. Is Jess on vacation tomorrow? Well, she's not. So if somebody could just put, like you did, another letter from the public works director saying, you know, if we have all the keys back, we will open it up until November, but we want the keys. Here, I'll, I'll buy the block right now, because I want to clean up my yard. <laughs> I'm serious. I want to clean up my yard. Well, the, I mean, I, I absolutely agree with you. I mean, it, it needs to be open, but we also need to have the people just follow the rules. They won't. Well, another thing about the keys is if you ever have to resort to that again, why would you not just to put it, have them put a deposit on the key and just say you have to return it immediately after you're done using it? Turn it for it. Yeah, 20 bucks or something. 
And, and I think, you know, like we said, we'll, we'll, it'll probably be closed up in November anyway. Mm -hmm. And so that gives us a few months to figure out what the plan is. And to talk we about it. it back up in April. You know, whether we hire somebody, whether we have a pass code, <coughs> or whatever it is we do. Just a better plan. Yeah, it'll be a much better plan in April. Sure. It, uh, Jess had said last week when I stopped up there that it was taking a lot of her time oh, to wow. write down mm -hmm. all the information and then get a hold of people to take keys. And I know Kevin had brought up last month too that there could be a couple months out of the year where we could potentially have it open 24 hours as long as there's not, you know, like when there's not, like this year there wasn't all the big storms to knock stuff down, so it wasn't as big of a necessity until now. So you want all the keys back before the open? I don't know that that's necessary. Yeah. I just say open it up tomorrow when you come in, and it's open until November. We have their phone numbers to be able to We have phone numbers to be able to I don't want to encourage people to make a copy of the key. Oh, oh, oh. No. no. Uh, that is a security thing. That might change change tomorrow. Like, yeah. Yeah. Change it tomorrow. But what are, what are options, like, so that you'd be looking at, like, a gated type thing, or? Or so we have a nice week. I think our best option is to have someone monitor it. All the C's around us do that. They okay. hire someone to monitor it. They're open for certain folks. Okay. Is there a need for any kind of like better surveillance? I mean, I don't know how like your guys jam cam and game. I think we've got every corner of that place. We have surveillance. You know, it's like you can't do anything. You can't, you can't do anything. Yeah. I mean, they won't give you anything. Even though they got them, you can't do nothing. you got to stop them before they drop it off. Right. That's early this year, I had a big pile of stuff we got that we don't take. I said, stop, read this. And well, last year I saw a three-foot diameter. I was going to take them, but then I was like, oh, that's probably not people to take stuff out of the compost site. But I was like, these would be perfect for selling around in the bonfire. You see how stuff they were three-foot diameter. <laughs> 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 And somebody wants them, but yeah, they want. So, are they going to have a, a separate pile for that kind of stuff? Bigger, bigger chunks, or what's the aspect on that? Can we, can we legally do that with our bed? Yeah, I don't know. No. No, I mean, I'm going to be open for anything for 12 yeah. hours. See, we're going to put them in right now. Us, I mean, we can sell them pots, but people can come and take from them. But they can't put any stuff in there. I mean, if you have big chunks of wood, you just. Post it on Facebook, it's going to be at your house in probably 20 minutes to pick the wood up. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just, I just want to make it clear, too, that um, I, I think that Ray County or any law enforcement agency would, would like to help us if they could, but because of lawsuits that all across the nation that law enforcement has endured, um, they can no longer give that information. A police officer, both my children are police officers, they can't even look up on a person's license number because they could lose their job on the spot from doing that so um they have to have very strict guidelines in place for that so i have a question so are the criminals do they have more rights than the honest people that pay for everything just like yes they do yes, yes they do 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 they won't do anything but you have pictures though right right yeah. isn't that proof well sometimes if it's a commercial guy i can embarrass him on facebook but Personal person, I don't know if that's quite legal. Maybe somebody should look into that, see what what you actually can do and what you can't do. Instead of speculating what you can't do, maybe you have more authority than you actually think you do. And maybe if the council would do their due diligence and actually research it, and then they can say they have a plan to address it. Legal dumping, is that what you're referring yes. to? Yes. Well, we already got the information from one of our one of our county deputies that they can't give out that information because it is a dump. It is a dump site. But you can charge for you can prosecute. We right? can, but at what cost? Well, I mean, I maybe you make an example out of a few of them. Right. And word spreads. Hey, don't go dump at Mont Rose because they will because come they after you. Them. Well, last time we had it locked up. You know, worked really well. We didn't get all this stuff until this COVID stuff started this spring. That's when we really started taking 
I mean, everybody's all cleaning everything out. I mean, if you're looking for help, there's a temp agency right in Delno. I bet somebody's looking for a part-time job, and if you only need them for a couple of weeks, it's not like you've got to put them on the, shouldn't have to put them in the union or anything. There's only a couple of weeks left this year, so we leave it open starting to run for a couple of weeks. Whatever happened to the gentleman who's an ex-veteran disabled that was sitting out there about two years ago? Oh, God, I mean, isn't there high school kids or just we're gonna check an hour? What? <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna check into that next year. <laughs> we'll charge That's, everybody five dollars, and that'll be their pay for them to watch it the most people. They just volunteer you to sit in the top. Oh, yeah, we love to do that. What a job! There you go. <laughs>
to possibly cancel it completely. Or maybe a one day celebration. Okay. That's where we're at. More importantly, we need people to come and help put this event on because it is very important to the community to continue to get this stuff going. And um, they have three, three board members. We need help. Yes. All the organizations. Um, I mean, that's all we can do with pretty much bag. Yeah. So, you have a question? Yes. Yeah. Are you uh, planning a breakfast with Santa this mm -hmm. we're still We're still trying to figure out how we're going about it. Okay, that was my question. Yep, yeah. but we still very much. Okay, because we have that limited. Uh, we're, just yeah. we're just trying to figure out the logistics of it. I think they talked masks like at the end or something. Yeah. In intervals. So they're talking about like stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 Okay. So do, a, do a sign up email in order to give time to people. Yeah. Yeah. And then there'll be no contact with Santa. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 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 well, I just want to be here. I just want to
council functions, personal management, budget, and managing expenses, and certainly other topics that may come up from uh, submissions. Submissions can either be by email. We've got a shared email box that we both see, so there's uh, visibility there. It's at MontroseMNVotes at gmail.com. Uh, so MontroseMNVotes at gmail.com. And uh, Karen and I review all of those, and then we'll look at those and consolidate those into questions that will fit into those topic areas. Um, there won't be any direct uh, rebuttals back and forth to the can candidates. We all saw the spectacle and how that works, and it didn't go very well, so we will have responses directed to the audience rather than to other candidates so that we can maintain decorum in the, in the process. I hope you have a good debate. And if there's any questions, please let Karen and I know. I think I put our, email, our phone numbers and emails in the letter I sent to you. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank Hope to see you again. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Okay, Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, included in your packet is our September activity report. Um, slower month in September than it was in October anyway, so that's a good thing for us. Um, a special note is we were awarded a grant from Computer Financial, it's a farm financial group. Um, it's a $3,000 non-matching non -matching grant that we're using just for some various equipment throughout the department. So, um, appreciate that and stuff, and we'll probably have more from them in the future on that. So, any questions on the activity report? Uh, next item is uh, authorization to purchase 25 sets of turnout gear utilizing CARES Act funding. Um, price should be right around $75,000 depending on the final cost of the uh, turnout gear that we spec out. So. I'll make a motion to approve the spending of the fire fire turnout gear. I'll second. All right, on what I would approve. Yes. Motion passes 4-0. Do you still have that money yet? No. no. <laughs> I'm trying. Uh, this is my last one. Yeah, I'm, I'm running out of time really fast. So. All right. um, and this does meet the three tiered questions that we do have to work on, and many other departments are doing the exact same thing as we're trying to do with it as well. So. We've, we've done a good job of it. Yeah. 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 He's, yeah he's good at this. Yeah. Um, so then I just want to give some information on fire prevention this year. Um, so fire prevention was last week, October the 4th through the 10th. Um, this year's um, theme was serve up fire safety in the kitchen, so it was really revolving around fire safety in the kitchen. Um, kitchen fires are the number one leading cause of house fires in the United States of America. Um, due to COVID, this year we had to change how we normally do our fire prevention. So um, we couldn't go and see the kids, and kids couldn't come see us. Um, so I wrote a, a letter with basically all the questions that they ask us every year and everything that we go over every year. Gave it to the teachers, gave it to the kids to bring home to their parents and stuff. Um, gave them a goodie bag. So the information and everything was still there. It's just delivery was a little bit different. So um, just some things to note. Um, I try to do this every year during fire prevention. Um, smoke detectors, make sure you're testing them and change testing them once a month, changing the batteries twice a year. We recommend changing them when you change your clocks for daylight savings time. Um, if your house is on fire, get out to stay out. Don't go back into the house to get anything or anybody. Um, have an evacuation plan, develop and practice those plans with your family, have a meeting place outside. And as far as uh, kitchen stuff, grease fires are the number one cause of kitchen fires in the United States. Um, the biggest thing with grease fires is do not put water on a grease fire. It causes a lot of issues. Um, turn off the burner, cover it with a towel or a lid or something along those lines. Call the fire department and get out of the house and stay out of the house so we can get it uh, taken care of and um, everybody's safe. So, uh, if anybody wants any more information on fire prevention, feel free to get a hold of me or look up the website uh, from the NFTA. There's plenty of information on there as well. Um, next item is um, hiring of firefighters. I would just kind of like pre-authorization to hire um, firefighters. We're working through the process right now, and I want to get them going as soon as possible here um, for a couple of different reasons. Um, so I'm looking to authorize the hiring of firefighters pending the hiring process results, which we normally just take up, take care of in-house. There's never really been any controversy or questions or anything that gets brought up. We vet our people pretty well. Um, they go through. Uh, Huge process, but it's a process nonetheless. 
Um, so I'm just looking for authorization to hire um, firefighters and the hiring process results. I have four in the hopper right now. So. I'll take four more. I'll make a motion to authorize the hiring of firefighters pending the hiring process results.
Cole. Aye. Kirby? Abstain. And Lloyd. Motion passes 3 1. And then I was just going to tell you that we, on uh, Wednesday night at the Planning Zoning meeting, are going to be talking about beekeeping in the city. Um, we had a resident that contacted the city about doing something like that, and I did check with both our city attorney and our city planner, and it is illegal to do within city limits. Um, city council can, can make certain restrictions if they want to allow people to do it, but we're going to bring it to the plan. We have nothing on our books, on our ordinance, in our ordinance about it, and so in order to regulate it, we need to get something in the ordinance, so we're going to be discussing it on Wednesday night. We did have that before. A gentleman on First Street North. Well, that had just like a little, well, they, they're recently just moved, but their plan was that they had a little happy on the bees. Yeah, that was one of the things that uh, the city planner did find in his research that if you designate certain areas in your city that are agricultural, mm -hmm. that's really the only place that it's, it's legal to do that. So, we'll see. We'll see. We'll open up another camp. So, we went through the chicken business. No. Well, it was. Yeah, we're we'll back. We still want chickens. I did? Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, we just. Staff talked about it when we got through the question. We thought about how close neighbors are to each other, and there's a lot of people that are highly allergic to bees, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of people that have children that are playing in their yards. And if someone next door has bees, um, what exactly does that mean for those people? So that's what we're going to take a look at. It. Yeah, because you can't keep the bees in that one area. There's right. going on all over. Right. Okay. Uh, city engineer, here is not here. I will take that. Um, you have before you uh, resolution 2028, and basically what you're doing with that resolution is at your August 31st workshop. Um, Jared, the engineer, went over with you the amendments and the, the amendments to the scope of work for the project that he put together after listening to the resident's testimony and also uh, what direction the city council gave you. And so before you tonight is just a resolution um, ordering preparation of report on the improvements. And then you see the schedule that we're going to be following. Um, he will give you that report at our October 26th uh, special city council meeting. And then we will again have another open house and another public hearing. In November? In November, yep. In this resolution, is it um, part of? I wasn't at that workshop, so um, is that um, uh, Central Avenue North opening up to Second Street? Is that in this resolution? This resolution is just to order the report so they can start doing to give it action. Yes. Okay. Yeah, no, we don't want that. All right. All right. <laughs> Make a motion to approve resolution number 2020-28. All right, I will vote aye and void. Aye. No vote. Aye. Kirby. Yes. Motion passes 4-0. Uh, Wayne. Mayor and Council, we got the uh, final payment for Highway 25. And last fall, there was a change order on it. The state made a temporary strike. So we all kind of footed that bill. You know, they want us to kick in. Everybody did, the state did, contracted did, and the state said if the city doesn't, the contractor can sue us So, and this would be their final payment. Well, with a little bit of residents, they're all aware of this. What do you mean residents? Well, you know, the ones that have the weed problems and all of that. This is just for striking. This is just for yeah. striking. The weed problem is more than you get, but. That's yeah, what I think that's, yeah, they sprayed for Rodney's, but they didn't spray for the yeah, other. Yeah, I called them, and they came back and sprayed again on the staff. Not yet. So we do need a motion and a second to yeah. change order, please. Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, Make a motion to improve change order number four, Trunk Highway 25 Improvement Project. Sound good. I'll second. All right, Kirby. Yes. 
I'll vote yes then. Motion passes three to one. Horse Creek. The next item is Horse Creek Park. What I did over the summer is I went out and I got a bid for putting in concrete, digging the hole, and under drains, and everything. And came back at $41,212. With a lot of concrete to go on my plan. It's set up with three benches and be good to go. And the guy I got the bid from talked to our homes. And the first thing they did was they kicked in 10000 and put a letter out to all their vendors. So far, one has given another 500 so I hope we get a bunch more and might get started on that, too. When do you plan on starting on that? As soon as the contract will kill. Still this, this I'd, like get, I'd like to get the whole one, the under drains, and all the concrete. And I explain how we get these subs. So do you need approval on studying? Uh, what cost are you looking at with your deductions? We don't, well, we don't know until... Just keep it at the... Right. Okay. We're going to know until... Until everybody comes in. Right. All right. <clears throat> Make a motion to approve the spending of up to 42000 for the installation of the park at Forest Creek Housing Development. I'll second that. Uh, any discussion on that? All right, I will vote aye and Kirby. Yes. Nicole? Aye. Floyd? Yes. Motion passes four to zero. We do have any more on the compost? Nope, I'd be glad it's going to be open. All right, I have a couple questions for you though. Um, we have an issue um, at 521 First Street, the drainage um, gate over there. I believe Jared and Justin over there at one point to take care of that, fix it. That's not a big issue according to them. All we gotta do is we'll get somebody in there to dig that little culvert deal in. Yeah. That's all we can do. And then fix the the, the screen gate thing, right? Yeah, that, that's what we're gonna do. Yeah. But and we told you and we told everyone it's not a big priority. Like the we have a ditch out here by behind the brothers. Mm-hmm. And then we got another one out of Breckenridge. They gotta dig those Pipes down to that pond back there. Okay. And then that would be next. So spring? Probably. Okay. Is it in Huh? Let's see. 520 on First Street. No. And then um, we have an issue still over at the property going out to Regional Park. Any word on that? Well, I talked to Justin Saturday. Okay. And he said he's reached out to two landscapers and they haven't gotten back to him within the price of the kind of stuff. Do you know what landscapers they reached out to? Uh, no, I don't. There's one just outside the town, I think one will settle. Maybe somebody up there. Okay. So, any
on this one. Yeah. 